Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science and today I want to introduce the hydrogen atom in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Hydrogen is the simplest of all elements with a single proton and a single electron. However, its importance cannot be overstated. Hydrogen is by far the most abundant element in the universe, making up up to 74% of all baryonic matter. For example, the sun is mostly made of hydrogen. In the context of quantum mechanics, the hydrogen atom also plays a really prominent role because it is one of a very select group of quantum systems that we can actually solve analytically. As such, the hydrogen atom is used as the starting point to understand more complex quantum systems, for example, other atoms. We have a whole series of videos dedicated to the study of the quantum mechanics of the hydrogen atom, so I really encourage you to check them out. In this video we're going to introduce the hydrogen atom and we're also going to set up its Hamiltonian. So let's go! The hydrogen atom is the simplest of all atoms. It is made of a single proton and a single electron. So let's start with a proton. In SI units it has a mass mp of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The proton has electric charge Qp and its value is the elementary charge that we typically denote with the letter E. In SI units it is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. Let's now consider the electron. In SI units, it has mass Me of 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. The electron has an electric charge equal to Qe, which is equal to the negative elementary charge. In SI units, it is equal to minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. Right, so what do these numbers mean? Let's start with the masses. The ratio of the masses mp over me is given by these numbers. And we get 1,833. In other words, the proton is almost 2,000 times heavier than the electron. Let's explore in more detail this large mass difference between the proton and the electron. For the hydrogen atom, it's actually not such a big deal because we can actually solve the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian analytically. However, the mass difference between proton and electron still proves convenient because it helps us gain some conceptual understanding of the mathematical solution. In particular, we're going to see later in this video that the large mass difference between proton and electron means that we can almost think of the hydrogen atom as an electron moving in the electrostatic field generated by a stationary proton. But this is only really the beginning of the story. Remember that hydrogen is the lightest of all elements, which means that for any other element A, starting with helium, lithium, and so on, then the ratio of the mass of the nucleus to the mass of an electron will be even larger. Crucially, unlike hydrogen, we cannot analytically solve the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian of other elements. The same is true for multi-atom systems such as chemical compounds or materials. There are no known analytical solutions to the corresponding Hamiltonian eigenvalue equations. In all of these cases, all we can do is to find approximate solutions, often requiring the use of modern supercomputers. And this is where the mass difference between atomic nuclei and electrons becomes hugely important because it allows us to separate the motion of the heavy atomic nuclei from that of the light electrons using the so-called Born-Oppenheimer approximation. This step hugely simplifies the equations of quantum mechanics in multi-atom systems and forms the basis of most numerical solutions to the corresponding Hamiltonian eigenvalue equations. In a way, we could say that much of our quantum mechanical understanding of chemistry, material science, and condensed matter physics relies on the large difference in the masses of atomic nuclei and electrons. But for now, let's go back to hydrogen. Let's now turn to the charges. We see that the proton and the electron have opposite charges of equal magnitude. 
Let's first assume that the proton and electron are classical point particles. And let's also draw a coordinate system, which I am keeping two-dimensional for clarity, but it is trivial to generalize this to three dimensions. Let the proton be at this position, Rp, and let the electron be at this other position, Re. Two charged classical point particles interact via an electrostatic potential V that depends on the position of both particles and is given by the Coulomb constant, multiplying the ratio of the product of the two charges over the distance between them. Remember that epsilon zero is the vacuum permittivity. Now, using the values of the charges in terms of the elementary charge, we get this new expression. This minus sign here indicates that the electrostatic potential between the proton and electron is attractive. In other words, the electrostatic potential is what binds a proton and an electron to form a hydrogen atom. If we now consider the proton and electron to be quantum particles, then all we have to do is to apply the usual quantization rule and promote the classical electrostatic potential to be an operator. This means that V depends on the position operators for the proton and the electron, and is equal to the same expression as above, but now the position coordinates become operators. We're now ready to write down the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom. The Hamiltonian H is given by the kinetic energy of the proton, which takes its usual form, plus the kinetic energy of the electron, which also takes its usual form, plus the potential energy described by the electrostatic interaction that we've just discussed. This Hamiltonian is one of the most important Hamiltonians in the whole of chemistry and the whole of physics. It allows us to learn a great deal about the hydrogen atom, and I really encourage you to watch our series of videos on this topic because it's fascinating. But in fact, this is not the whole story. In our study of quantum mechanics, we have so far been neglecting relativistic terms arising from Einstein's special theory of relativity. As such, this Hamiltonian is a non-relativistic Hamiltonian. Relativistic terms become important when we have particles moving at speeds that are approaching the speed of light. The electrons in hydrogen do not move at speeds that are close to the speed of light, and therefore hydrogen is a weakly relativistic system. However, modern spectroscopic techniques do allow us to measure the small relativistic corrections to the predictions that arise from the non-relativistic Hamiltonian above. These relativistic terms lead to the so-called fine structure and hyperfine structure of hydrogen. While these are really interesting topics, our focus today will initially be on the non-relativistic hydrogen atom that is described directly by this Hamiltonian up here. After all, the electrostatic potential that we have is still by far the dominant interaction in hydrogen, so it is a worthwhile starting point. In the rest of the video, we will rewrite this Hamiltonian in a more convenient form that will simplify our mathematical analysis of the hydrogen atom in subsequent videos. To do so, we're going to use the results that were presented in the video on two interacting quantum particles, of which the hydrogen atom is an example. So again, I encourage you to check that video out if you haven't watched it yet, uh, and the link is in the description as usual. As written, the Hamiltonian depends on four quantities, the position and the momentum of the proton, and the position and momentum of the electron. It will prove convenient to make a change of variables to a new set of four quantities, the center of mass, position, and total momentum, described by capital R and capital P, and the relative position and momentum, described by lowercase r and p. For the center of mass coordinates, the center of mass position is given by this expression in terms of the position operators of the proton and electron, and the total momentum is the sum of the individual momenta of the proton and electron. For the relative coordinates, we have that the relative position is the difference between the proton and electron positions, and the relative momentum is given by this expression in terms of the proton and electron momenta. 
With this change of coordinates, we now come to the key result from the video on two interacting quantum particles. In terms of this new set of coordinates, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom as equal to a kinetic energy term that involves the total momentum, a kinetic energy term involving the relative momentum, and a potential energy term involving the relative coordinate. In this expression here, the capital M is the total mass of the system and is given by the sum of the two masses. And the mu here is the reduced mass of the system and is given by this expression. For completeness, let me also mention that we often encounter the defining relation for the reduced mass written like this, a form that is completely equivalent to the original one. So, what have we accomplished with this change of coordinates? In the original Hamiltonian up here, the interaction term depends on the position operators of both the proton and the electron. Such an interaction term makes this a two-particle problem. If we now look at the transformed Hamiltonian down here, we see that the interaction term only depends on the relative position operator, but does not depend on operators associated with the center of mass. As we'll see in a moment, this means that we can now describe the hydrogen atom as two separate one-particle problems, which is a much simpler setup than the original two-particle problem. Let's see how this comes about. If we look at this transformed Hamiltonian for the hydrogen atom, we see that this first term only depends on center of mass coordinates. So we can call it the center of mass Hamiltonian. While these two terms only depend on the relative coordinates, so we can call them the relative Hamiltonian. Let's first consider the center of mass Hamiltonian. It looks like the Hamiltonian of a single particle of total mass, capital M. Therefore, we can think of it as describing the motion of a fictitious particle whose mass is the total mass of the system. Furthermore, as the early term is the kinetic energy term, this Hamiltonian describes the motion of a free particle. Let's now consider the relative Hamiltonian. It looks like the Hamiltonian of a single particle of mass mu moving in an electrostatic potential centered at the origin of coordinates. Again, we can also think of it as describing the motion of a fictitious particle, this time of mass mu, moving in an electrostatic potential. So what does all of this mean? The center of mass of the hydrogen atom behaves like a free particle, so without loss of generality, we can simply assume that the center of mass is stationary and just forget about it. The interesting physics of the hydrogen atom are therefore captured by the relative motion of the proton and electron as described by this Hamiltonian, and this will be our main focus in the study of the hydrogen atom. So overall, what have we accomplished? Hydrogen is a two-particle system. However, by a smart choice of coordinates, we have shown how we can reduce the problem to the study of the relative motion of the two particles. And this relative motion is described by this Hamiltonian here that looks like the Hamiltonian of a single particle. And mathematically, this is a much easier problem to solve. And let me remind you again that this discussion of the center of mass and relative coordinates builds on the video on two interacting quantum particles that is linked in the description, so check it out if you need a refresher. Let me discuss one final point before we finish. I hope I've convinced you that using this Hamiltonian for the relative motion of the proton and electron will help us solve the mathematics associated with the hydrogen atom. And indeed, this is precisely what we do in some of the other videos on hydrogen. To be precise, we treat the system as a single fictitious particle whose momentum is the relative momentum of the proton and electron here, whose mass is the reduced mass of the proton and electron here, and whose position is the relative position of the proton and electron here. But how can we conceptually understand this fictitious particle? 
To do so, we need to go all the way back to the large difference in mass between the electron and the proton and use it to put some numbers into the parameters featuring in the center of mass and relative coordinates. First, let's consider the center of mass position. Remember that it is given by this expression. And as the proton mass is much larger than the electron mass, this denominator is approximately equal to the proton mass. With this, we can now approximate the center of mass position as equal to the proton position, plus Me over Mp times the electron position. This ratio is of the order of 10 to the minus 3, which means that we can approximate this whole expression by simply the proton position. What does this mean? Because of the large mass difference between the proton and the electron, the center of mass position pretty much coincides with the proton position. Now try to remember this and let's consider the reduced mass of the system. Remember that the inverse of mu is given by this expression. As the mass of the proton is much larger than the mass of the electron, then the inverse mass of the proton is much smaller than the inverse mass of the electron. This means that we can approximate this expression by 1 over Me. And rearranging, we find that the reduced mass of the system is approximately equal to the electron mass. So what does all of this mean? We know that this Hamiltonian up here describes a fictitious particle of mass mu associated with the relative motion of the proton and electron. But we've just found that the huge mass difference between the proton and electron implies that the center of mass position is very close to the proton position and that the reduced mass is very close to the electron mass. This means that the fictitious particle is in fact almost equal to an electron moving about a stationary proton. And this is the intuition that we were looking for. We can, to a good approximation, think about hydrogen as simply having a stationary proton and only consider the motion of the electron. Now, this analogy would in fact be exact if the proton mass was infinite, as in that case, the proton would indeed be stationary. In fact, when we move from hydrogen to the heavier isotopes deuterium or tritium, this is precisely what happens. Treating the nucleus as stationary becomes an increasingly good approximation. Overall, this is a helpful way to conceptually think about the problem, but we know that it is technically not quite correct because although the proton mass is much larger than that of the electron, it is not quite infinitely larger. For an exact mathematical solution, we of course have to solve the actual relative Hamiltonian. The hydrogen atom is a key quantum system in all of physics, chemistry and material science. Hydrogen is a two-particle system made of a proton and an electron. However, we've seen today that we can map this two-body problem onto two simpler one-body problems. One describing the motion of the center of mass of the hydrogen atom, and another one describing the relative motion between the proton and the electron. As a next step, I would suggest that you watch the videos where we solve the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom, and that will help us to learn about its energy levels and its energy eigenfunctions. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.